I won Runway's Gen 48 contest twice using nothing but generative AI tools, editing software, and a lot of coffee. This video is a journal of my ideation, process, and creativity during Gen 48 second edition, where I had only 48 hours to create an entire short film generated with AI. The clock begins now. It's 6 a.m. and I'm facing the daunting task to create a one to four minute AI short film where all videos must be generated in runway and contain one element from each of three categories, character, setting, and object. My first stop is ChatGPT, not for its writing ability, but for its ability to kickstart the brainstorming process. In this competition, it is extremely helpful as there are so many possible combinations of story elements. So I give ChatGPT all the rules for the contest and the list of the three elements and it immediately starts to give me numerous top-level story ideas that I can use as a starting point. I ultimately choose a misunderstood character in an art museum with a lit candle. To make ChatGPT's film summary uniquely mine, I modify it to serve as a loose guide for my desired storytelling approach. Having a loose story idea is key here, because we're not to the point of AI video yet that I can completely trust the desired shot I want will be executed in the way that I want it. It is important to be open to how you want to visually tell the story and adjust it as you go. Next, I create an outline for the story structure and then finally a shot list of how I want to tell the visual story. If you're unfamiliar with the shot list, it's just that, a list of all the shots I think I'm going to need to tell this story. It's a list to work off of, as not everything that is needed visually is written in the script. This is the part of the director's job that I love the most. Now that I have my story, I need to choose the style of the video, style of my character, and then create a character sheet. I want to go with a sketch on white paper feel, but I just can't seem to nail the look I'm going for. So I pivot. My daughter is obsessed with Monet, so after a few more mid-journey tests, I choose to use the impressionist painting style for my look and feel. Next I use mid-journey to create the misunderstood creature. Using the prompt, the character sheet of a bizarre and plump creature. The style of the creature should be in the style of a scribble or child's drawing. I need to see the full body front, full body side profile, and the back view of the character in the character sheet, split into three. Aspect ratio 16 by nine. Immediately, Mid Journey gives me some pretty great results. And with a little tweaking in Photoshop, I am able to create a full body character sheet with layers that I can use later. So now with the character and background style chosen, I need to think of a plan of how I'm going to do this workflow and actually create this film within the time remaining. I briefly try Runway's Gen 1 video to video, but it doesn't give me the results I'm looking for. The new plan is to think of this workflow as something similar to how old school animation works, where you have the background layer separate from the characters. This means creating numerous backgrounds as one layer and the character on a separate cell, ultimately combining them later during animation. I try a few test shots and this process seems that it will work perfectly. Hell yeah. Now I take my shot list and start making all the backgrounds and b-roll shots I need in mid-journey. It's a long process but I get great results using the new style reference command where you can give better style context to mid-journey using a photo link as a reference image. After two hours of image generation I have great results but don't have everything I need for my sets. So I hop over to Runway and decide to try and train a model on the look and feel I'm going for. This takes a while, but it works great to fill in the gaps for my shot list that I am not able to accomplish in mid-journey. Two and a half hours later, I'm still prompting in mid-journey and Runway, but I'm close to finishing the shot list and moving on to animation. It's been 10 hours and I still haven't finished all of the image generation in Runway and mid-journey, but I begin creating the animatic in Premiere Pro to start to build the story. If you are unfamiliar, think of an animatic as a rough cut of the animation, timed to the voiceover and music. For this animatic, I'm going to basically make the film twice, once to figure out my final shots, and then again with the final animations. First I layer in the b-roll shots and the background images in a rough story order. I add a PNG of my character to the scene and adjust both the size and placement of the character and also the shot, similar to the crop duster method I talked about in a previous video. But in this project I will finalize my animatic first and then go into Photoshop and recreate these starting animation frames in higher resolution and with more control. With only 35 hours remaining, I am just now ready to start animating some of the clips in Runway. I don't generally multitask, but when under a tight deadline and when you are working alone, it's an important part of the workflow in AI filmmaking. Now I jump back and forth between generating image to video in Runway and recreating the shots with the creature in Photoshop that I roughly sketched out in the animatic. Animation is going well for the B-roll images in Runway. As I wrap up batches of shots, I start upresing Runway's output videos to 4K MOV files with Topaz AI. My eyes are starting to blur, but I need to do at least one more hour of this workflow to keep up the pace. During last year's competition, I was already finished at this time, so I'm getting a little nervous about making the deadline. 
It's now 11.50 p.m. and I've been at my computer for 17 hours straight. I feel good about the amount of shots I have finalized and added to the cut and will have to finish the rest of the character animation tomorrow. I just can't keep my eyes open enough to generate one more shot. 5 a.m. is my normal wake up time and my biological clock doesn't give a fuck that I slept terribly for only four hours, dreaming of all the shots I still had to generate. So I'm up, getting coffee, and jumping back into the project to try and pick up where I left off. After a brief inventory of the project, I realize I only have 36 more shots to generate. F my life, I better get to it. I've been generating for more than four hours already and still have 27 shots left to go. I'm going back and forth between generating character movement with the multi-motion brush tool and fine tuning the edit at the same time. As I finish more and more video clips, I start to add some light sound effects and finishings to the edit so I can be as far along as possible when the video generation is complete. With only 16 hours remaining, all but three shots are finished. And these are critical to the story. Two of them are close-up shots of the plaque that says unknown. I've tried every prompting technique I know of and I just can't get mid-journey or runway to give me the results I'm looking for. Normally I hate Dolly's image output, but I'm desperate so I give it a go. And actually, some of the results are much closer to what I need. So I keep going and eventually, with some help from Photoshop, finalize two of the three remaining shots. It only took me, uh, hold on, let me look at the clock. Three hours? Damn, what am I doing with my life? Now there's only one final shot left to create. A time-lapse shot of art patrons checking out the museum's new painting. Creating a time-lapse and runway is not easy, but I know it'll be a great ending to my film, so I press on. But with a mushed mind and blurry eyes, I'm running on pure artistic adrenaline, unsure of how I'm going to do this technique. After a few deep breaths, the workflow becomes clear to me. Do it in steps. Keeping the final wide shot in mind, I reverse engineer the shot in my head, thinking of what it would take to edit a time lapse like this if it was real. If real, I would let the camera run for a very long time watching the venue fill up as more and more people arrive. I would then cut this into three or four shots with only a simple fade in between them. Easy. So then, with renewed confidence, I say to myself, if there's a way to do this in reality, then why can't I do it with AI? I immediately bring the background plate into Photoshop and start to use generative fill to build my scene, adding in more Monet-styled people in different layers. After building my master scene and cleaning it up a bit, I turn off all the new generative fill layers one at a time and export each instance as its own PNG. Next, I take these individual shots into runway and animate the people in each shot using multi-motion brush. Then, like I would in a real time lapse, I simply put these clips together in a sequence and add a camera movement in post. And because I've already made all the finishing layers, all I have to do is drop this clip into my edit and I'm finished. Oh wait, fuck me. I still have to edit the entire sound design as well. With less than 10 hours remaining, I can barely see the screen in front of me, but what I can see looks really, really good. I could go back and try to make it perfect, but I know that if I start down this path, I will never finish in time. As they say, perfect is the enemy of good. So with complete exhaustion, I finally click the export button and upload my entry to the Gen48 submission page and pass the f out. Less than three days later, I was thrilled to hear that out of 1,600 signups, I was one of 40 that made the finalist list, and was even more thrilled to find out that a few weeks later that I was one of only eight winners, winning the Runway Gen 48 Second Edition Best Art Direction Award. The second edition had so much great competition, and I was really impressed by the winning films, but also those from the finalist list. It's really humbling to be part of such a vibrant and growing community of AI filmmakers. I hope this video helps you in your journey. And if you haven't seen it yet, you can watch Unknown by clicking the link here. Thanks for watching.